So we're back practicing shooting at longer distances for this video, but this time, instead of using my 14 and a half inch barreled M4 clone, I will be using my 20 inch barreled M16 A4 clone instead. Reason being because in my last few videos when I was using the M4, it was actually the improper barrel length for the ACOG that I've been shooting with, so I wanted to eliminate as many variables as possible. Not only did this give me a chance to kind of switch it up and have some fun shooting a different rifle, but it also helped me, as I just mentioned, remove any variables in my shooting. And when I tried to see what I'm doing uh, not too well or what I could improve on, that's one less thing I have to worry about and eliminate that guesswork. So I'll get into this a little later in the video, but I found that my shots were always um, having certain shapes to them. And I found that those shapes corresponded to certain uh, improper techniques that I was using. And that was super helpful. And then towards the end of the video, you'll see I kind of improved as I applied these techniques too. So I'll go over some of these lessons learned towards the end of the video, but of course, details, details in the rifle first. I am using the M16A4 clone, as I mentioned, which is a 20 inch barrel, and it's mostly out of BCM parts. And I have the Trigicon ACOG that I've been using for a bit again calibrated for the 20 inch barrel. It's definitely a fun gun to use just because of the throwback to you know the period in which it was used, but also I find that the recoil impulse is smoother than my 14 and a half inch M4, and so that's like a nice added bonus too. I also picked up a little bit of match grade ammo as well, just to kind of try things out. So here I have some Black Hills 77 grain open tip match and also IMI 77 grain razor cord. These are some pretty popular cartridges and they should give me some more accuracy and consistency when I'm shooting. And I also just shot some regular M193 ball just to compare the differences as kind of like a control group almost. I first shot at 100 yards from a bench, which is the target you see here, just to understand what my best performance would look like with each of the different types of ammunition, making the assumption that as I start to shoot prone at 200, any opening up of the groups may likely be more of my technique than the ammo, while understanding that still, I should expect some loss of accuracy and consistency the farther out that I shoot. And so my key takeaway from this target here is that clearly all the ammo can perform good groups, so I'm assuming it's gonna be up to me and my practice to improve when I start shooting further out. So I actually shot this video over the course of two weekends, and the first kind of montage you'll see here is still using the IMI and also the Black Hills as well, but it's uh, from looking at my groups after this range day, I really started to pick up and understand how to improve. And then my second range day, which I'll show afterwards, is where I start to like apply those techniques and you can see things start to improve. So I'll roll in the footage from both of those. Let's go over some of those lessons learned, and then we'll move into range day number two. So in terms of lessons learned from range day number one, first I saw that uh, all of my groups are off to the left and you know, not too big of a deal to me. I can either hold or dial to adjust for windage. But a good thing too, is that compared to my previous video where I was using like wolf steel case ammo, my groups this time were much tighter. So that's a good thing. The most important lesson I learned here is that I see trends in the shapes of my three shot groups themselves. Primarily I'm noticing that they are either horizontal or they are vertically stacked as well. And so I was pretty curious to know if that really meant anything or if it's just, you know, a coincidence. So I did some research to understand if these patterns really meant anything. And so from what I understand, vertical strings in my groups means a, uh, improper breathing technique, whereas horizontal strings mean improper body and rifle alignment. So while I had always known that breathing properly was a real fundamental uh, piece of shooting at distance, I guess for some reason it had never really hit home for me until I started to really research it. I think before what I was doing in uh, previous range sessions uh, in previous videos, 
as I was still trying to breathe uh, properly, but I guess I would um, maybe not pay as much attention to that as I had hoped for. And as I continued in with my range sessions, I would get lazy about trying to stay aware of it. In terms of horizontal alignment, I think I'm still trying to figure out how and when I know I have proper uh, alignment with my rifle. But in the meantime, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that my sight picture, or at least my distance between my eyes and the scope, are always the same. Uh, I kind of mentioned this before, but I think before I was a little off center whenever I was shooting my groups. And so while I thought my reticle was dead in the middle, I was actually shooting a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. So with these two pieces of information in mind, my vertical groups and also my horizontal groups, I went into range day number two, really making sure I always had the correct sight picture, making sure that I also wasn't uh, always tense when I was shooting, because I think sometimes I was really trying to hold the gun uh, purely with muscle as opposed to being purely relaxed. And in terms of breathing, when I was shooting, I noticed that whenever I would inhale, the rifle would dip down just slightly. And then, then when I exhaled, the rifle would dip up just a little bit, and it would kind of hang at the top as I fully exhale. I tried to be very aware of this this time and only shoot when I was fully exhaled. And so the rifle wasn't swaying and wasn't moving anymore at the top, at the peak there. That's when I started to take my shots during range day number two. And I think all of these definitely helped me out a lot. I shot a couple groups from the bench at about 200, 220 yards. Again, just to kind of see, you know, where my holes were at and to see, you know, what like my control group was. And then I went prone and then I started to shoot uh, at the same distance. And as you can see here, it did a lot better uh, than in previous videos. So I was definitely very happy about that. Uh, it's the kind of thing where I had known all of these techniques were very important, but I guess it takes me a lot of practice to fully drive the point home and to know how to really apply them. Like you can read about it and then you know to pay attention to it, but how do you actually put that into practice? I think is something that I was and still am learning. And so I feel like I made like a, you know, like mini breakthrough in this range session which is pretty sick. And so uh, pretty happy with these groups. The cool thing too, is I know Black Hills and IMI, they can both even perform better. I know I'm not using like a super precise scope, but um, in the future when I do buy one, um, I will be very interested to see, uh, to see what my groups will look like. And the last thing is that, uh, I know I've kind of spoken about it before, but it's just interesting how many small things you need to be aware of and need to really uh, put into practice when you're shooting at longer distance. There's just so much more I have to pay attention to and be really self-conscious about. And so it's uh, definitely more of a challenge, but as I said before, it's incredibly fun and it's, uh, it's just super interesting. Uh, because it's obviously not just point and shoot. There's a lot of technique and practice that gets uh, that gets applied. And so I'll keep shooting, I'll keep practicing. Uh, I'll probably end up sticking with the M16 for now just to make sure my barrel length is right. In the future, it would be pretty cool to pick up like an MPVO, maybe an LPVO, but um, that's, uh, that's a discussion for another time. But uh, in the meantime, I uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned as well, and I will catch you in the next one.